It is just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Judy Bennett, RDH, BS. She started speaking 20 years ago on all things instruments. Came from a background working for Hugh Freedy for 10 years. After doing lectures and workshops for a few years, she decided to expand her repertoire. While doing mission work in South and Central America, she started hearing about silver diamine fluoride. She came back to the States and couldn't find anything about it. Then one day someone told her that it just got an FDA approval. Well, that's all she needed. She got a bottle and fell in love with it. She started writing and talking about it to whoever would listen. She also became passionate about all the over-the-counters in dentistry. Hard to keep up with them, but she tries. That's what leads her to the townie course. She's speaking at the next townie meeting in Scottsdale, Arizona. She'll be speaking Thursday, March 21st from 2.30 to 3.30. Her course title is The Myths and Legends and Realities of Over-the-Counter Products. So she's buying all sorts of stuff over the internet. Sometimes they have something to prove to us. They don't want to spend hundreds of dollars to whiten their teeth. They'd rather try charcoal, for example. And that's uh, all she needs to understand is there is no research anywhere in the world on charcoal and oil pulling. Uh, But when a patient has something to prove, they might brush longer or better or something we might see a positive effect. Oil pulling requires 20 minutes according to everything on the internet. What she has evidence for only takes 30 seconds. She likes to recommend uh, CPC, chlorhexidine gluconate, xylitol, licorice, chlorine dioxide, tea extracts, and something new called Christane. Is that what you call it? No, Chris- um, no Kydazan. There's a new no product Kydazan out there. Well, you know, it's um, it's an interesting world. Um, when people start talking about, you know, how Facebook's changed the world and social media and everything, I mean, um, you know, s- social media has been going on my whole life. I'm 56. When I was a little kid and you went and spent the night with your buddy from school on a big wheat farm where you couldn't even see the next house, after supper and everything was done, it was dark, what did the old man do? He walked out into the barn and got on his ham radio and was talking to other wheat farmers in Iowa and Canada. And then when we got in the car, they had the CB radio. And there was a CB oh, radio. So my, the ham- name, my name was Sugar Wafer on the CB radio. Sugar Wafer. Oh, that's amazing. And you're a hygienist and it's Sugar Wafer. Uh, my, my dad uh, was the golden ghost. That was what he uh, his CB handle was. So when MySpace came out and Friendster and message boards and all that stuff, um, it's the same stuff. Um, just different names on it. But um, it is, it, it, it's really been um, interesting times because... As everybody spends more and more time on social media, you have all these people that are on um, Instagram that get a commission of everything they sell. So they're on there making videos about this electric toothbrush, you know, Quip versus Buster versus Sonicare versus all this stuff, oil pulling, charcoal. And, and it really is interesting how I've always believed that people just want to believe what they want to believe. They, they hate inconvenient facts so it's nothing new when they don't hear something from a dentist they don't like um everybody wants school prayer as long as it's their prayer you know they don't want anybody else's prayer um so it it is um these over-the-counter products a lot of them are just hilarious like who would spend 20 minutes doing oil pulling when you could brush and flush your teeth in two minutes but uh so so what 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 are you most passionate about today why why are you um and what are you speaking on at townie meeting tell tell us about your journey there well so the course i'm doing is just part of a big course so it's called the myths legends and realities of over-the-counter products and basically what you said is correct and unfortunately our patients will get stuff off the internet they'll get it from dr oz they'll get it from somewhere there are you know thousands of sites if you were to google something and I think that hygienists and dentists need to know where to go to get the information that they're looking for. The patient comes into your office and they said, oh, I got this product such and such. If you don't know what it is, that's a problem. So I kind of go through a quick overview of how to get the right information. We can't just Google. You know, for instance, Google Scholar is a better option where we can actually get the real evidence. We can look at Cochrane Review. We can look at all these great sites to find out if something's correct or not. And I just want the dental professional to have a better sense of what's out there, what's good, what's not, and figure out what they want to use. It's not like we can just use one toothpaste for everybody and one toothbrush for everybody and one mouthwash. 
So I want everybody to know all the different options. So even though I'm only doing part of the class, I want to give them a flavor of all the different things that are out there. You know, just as an example, there's a toothpaste they sell down the street from me called um, um, uh, cake frosting. And it's better than brushing your teeth with real frosting. Well, who's brushing their teeth with frosting? But yet they sell cases of it a year. You know, people think it's funny. They think it's a joke. And then I, I go on the internet and start looking at it and people are using it. They love it. Well, there's no fluoride in it. There's nothing of any value. So my goal is to kind of give them an overview at this course of some of the good, the bad, and the ugly, as I call it, and really understand what's, what, what we need to do, what we need to look at, because they're finding it on Facebook. They're finding it everywhere they look. And, and there's a lot of challenges with it. You know, just let, 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 let's start with the biggest guy. You brought up Dr. Oz, not me. Um, what, what do you think about him in general whenever he talks anything dental? I mean, I'm not an expert in all the other subjects he's talking about, but when he's talking dental, when you hear Dr. Oz so talking about dental, problem. do you think he's right on or right off? He is a cardiothoracic surgeon. If he focused on what he does best, I think we'd all be in good shape. But he pretends to know everything about everything. And he got us all in trouble a couple years ago when he started giving everybody a hard time about the thyroid uh, collar. Lately, he has a thing on his website and he's talked, he's actually telling people to rinse their mouth with lemon juice from a real lemon, but don't do it for more than 30 to 60 seconds or it'll erode your teeth. What, in what planet do we as dental professionals want our patients to be rinsing with lemon juice? Okay, it, it, he just, he doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to dental, and I just get nervous every time he brings it up. And then the problem is he brings it up, our patients see it, and then they come into our office and start asking us questions about it. So I try to talk about some of those challenges and make sure that everybody understands where it's coming from. So here's another example. This one didn't come from Dr. Oz, but on Facebook as an example, there was a big thing that every dental hygienist was passing around. It said, don't use a toothpaste with a little black strip on the end that's black, that it's all poison. Well, I called Colgate, I called Crest, I called all my friends. I said, what's this black strip on the bottom? They all started laughing at me. They said, that's the line that we, they line up on the conveyor belt to fill it with, with toothpaste. It has absolutely nothing to do with what the chemicals are that are in the toothpaste, what the composition is. So lots of wrong information is getting out there. And I'm just trying to give people, give the clinician the information, the tools they need to make the right decisions for their patients and answer those questions when they come up. Uh, what percent of Americans do you just consider batshit crazy? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what would you guess? I mean, you think it's 80, 20, you think 80% are normal, 20% are crazy. Do you think or it's reversed? Oh. I'm not getting into a political conversation. No, 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 politics. Just, just, just bat shit crazy. In general, I, I think our whole country has become so crazy. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I got, I got patients that are like chain smoking alcoholics and the looks of their skin, something else is wrong. And when you tell them they need deep cleaning and they need to get this tooth out and they got infection, they start telling me they're going to take a bunch of B6 and B12. I had a guy, I had a guy yesterday. I was telling him what his problem was. And he says, well, he goes, before I do anything, my mom's always telling me I need to go buy fish oil. And if I just take six fish oil a day for like six weeks, it's going to clean out. And it's like, I mean, it's like, are you from a different planet? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's just, I mean, it just seems uh, um, water fluoridation. I worked on the campaign to fluoridate water here in 89. Then it expired 20 years and we had to do it again. And one in four people in Arizona literally believe it was a communist plot. One, one guy told me that the, the, the fluoride is a byproduct of the aluminum manu, um, um, uh, miners, and it's so toxic, there's nowhere on earth they can pour it. So they bribe the government officials to pour it slowly in the water. I'm like, dude, this country has detonated 1,800 nuclear bombs. Don't you think they could go where they detonated a whole bunch of nuclear bombs and pour the fluoride there? I mean, I mean, what what part of the of their mind? So I, I would I'm convinced after what two water fluoridation debates that one in four Americans are incapable of any type of scientific thought or reasoning. I, I mean, mean uh, maybe even higher though, because I've I've been involved. This is my third time with fluoride, and 
you know, it's scary the things that they, you know, now they're saying autism, they're saying, I had a, this old woman, 82 year old woman got up in front of the, the committee down here in Florida in, a, in one of the towns in Wellington. And she said, I'm afraid to take a shower now because it's going to get in my pores. And I looked at her and I said, honey, you got a lot more, you know, crazy stuff that's getting in your pores rather than fluoride to be worried about. But, you know, up in Allentown, Pennsylvania, we had a, one of our voting members of the committee refused to vote for it because she said she refused to cook her husband's pasta in fluoridated water and she refused to iron his shirts in fluoridated water. And I couldn't make, you and I have seen so many of these crazy people that we, we're not making this stuff up, but I agree with you. But I would say more than one in four. I, I you know, now that well, you're- what I'm, what I'm most proud of is the- yeah. <laughs> what, what I'm most proud of is when I was uh, on the Arizona Citizens of Redental Health and we did this campaign, I got a death threat where actually two policemen came to my house. They want to know how I want to handle it because they, uh, they, she sent me a death threat. She sent me a letter and she was going to kill me. They went out to her place. She was like 85 years old. They said she could barely answer the door. And they're like, well, you know, how, <laughs> you know, she, she technically said she's going to kill you. And, uh, and it was because that she puts water on her orange trees and the fluoride in the water would kill her orange trees. And, uh, and, uh, but, uh, they, I said, well, do you think, but I, I just, I just laughed. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. I mean, she wants to kill a dentist for yeah. fluoridating water because of her orange trees. But anyway, so let's well, go back. Scary. It, it's scary. And there are a lot of crazy people. And I think it depends on where you are in the country. I mean, you know, just some of the other crazy stuff in Virginia, West Virginia, I'm sorry, they use uh, Mountain Dew as an antidepressant. They put it in babies' bottles. I mean, you know, as I travel around the country, I see so many crazy things. And, and so, you know, it's fun for me to be able to share some of the stories I hear in one part of the country with another. And, and I really, you know, I've spent my entire, I was born and raised in a dental office. My dad's a dentist, mom's a hygienist. I've lived in dentistry my entire life. So for me, you know, I have so many amazing stories. So I don't just make up the stuff. I don't just talk about stuff people tell me. I, you know, being in clinical hygiene for the last 40 years, I've seen and heard so much stuff that I'm able to really sh share from the podium my experiences. Um, so I, so, so if, you, if your dad's a dentist and mom's a hygienist, when you were born, you only had three options. You had to be a dentist, a hygienist, or a disappointment. And uh, so, <laughs> so you, well, I think you, I'm still, I think I was still a disappointment because they wanted me to become a dentist. But the good news was I dated a guy years ago and he took over my dad's office. So he had somebody to leave it to. And, and that was fine. I moved on to bigger and better things. <laughs> so you, you dumped your boyfriend off on your dad and then you moved out. <laughs> Well, you know, I think you live in the craziest state because in Arizona, whenever we do anything stupid, they always say that we're the Florida of the West. Yeah, yeah. They never, they never call Florida the Arizona of the East. So you must be, you must be in a slightly crazier state uh, than, than Arizona. Um, but, but then some of the stuff that um, the hygienists pick on, I don't really have a problem with. Like, I remember there was a big uh, controversy over the blue speckles in the toothpaste. Okay. And they, they wanted them gone because some of the hygienists are finding around the guns. But raising four boys, you know, if 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 it was buying you an electric toothbrush that made you take care of your teeth as opposed to manual, or if it was a it was, it was a water pick, or if it was blue sparkles. I mean, some of this stuff we do that's kind of voodoo, just for head reasons, motivation to to get them involved in taking their teeth. That's why I like tooth whitening so much. I graduated right when tooth whitening started. Remember, it was a company out of Arkansas called Omni. It was Omni International out of uh, Arkansas selling this uh, Omni White. And all these people were, you know, the first thing the dentist wanted is five-year studies on it. And I'm like, well, you're not going to get a five-year study on something that was invented an hour ago. But what I like the most about whitening is whenever they would bleach their teeth, they just got into their teeth. So then they would start brushing, flossing, coming to the dentist, getting their cavity fixed. It's kind of like you either haven't been bowling one time in 10 years or you own your own bowling ball and you're in a league. It's the same thing with the boat. You know, they, they either haven't been to the lake in five years or they have a boat and a jet ski. So with humans, they're kind of into it or not. And for me, a dentist has to be an armchair psychologist to try to motivate these people to get in their teeth. So if they're, if they're, if it takes oil pulling or sparkles in the toothpaste or electric toothbrush versus manual, I don't want to get into the research. I just want to know what's going to make Mary brush your damn teeth. What's going to motivate them. And so part of that is what I say about them 
if they have ownership, if even though we don't have clinical trials that show that oil pulling and charcoal does anything that's effective, I mean, we, we have to make sure they're using a product that's safe. But the problem is, is that there is no evidence, yet some people will come in and they look better. And the reason they look better is strictly because of what you just said. They, they think it's fun. They like it. There's a novelty effect to it. So if they have something to prove to themselves or to you, they're going to take more time. They're going to brush longer. They might floss. They're, they're doing something different. They're, they're conscientiously thinking about their teeth. And that's half the battle for you and I, getting them excited, getting them to do something. But my goal is to say, okay, now you're willing to rinse for 20 minutes. Well, you know, why can't you do something for 30 seconds that I know has proof that will work for you? And that's kind of where we're trying to get hygienists and dentists to start thinking about, okay, we've got all these great new products. What's, what do we want to use? Let's look at the research. Let's see if they're good. And then once we know that, we can go from there. But going back to the blue dots that you were talking about, it was, it's really, that was an aesthetic thing. There is no blue, those little micro um, pieces are no longer in any toothpaste on the market, but a clinician may still see them because those little pieces are still in chewing gum and lipstick. So if a patient comes in and they still have those little blue dots, they might still be, you know, they might think that it's from a toothpaste when in fact it's not, it's from something else. Okay. Well, I'm glad you said it because I'm going to go check my lipstick right after this uh, show. <laughs> so you you mentioned uh, several things in your intro. Let's, let's start with CPC. Okay. What what is what is CPC? Settle and is it and is it different than PCP? Yeah, settle prindium chloride is a mouthwash that's been out for a long, long time. It started off as scope, and then they realized that scope was not a therapeutic thing. It was more of just a, a breath freshener. So now Colgate and Crest both have a product and they have um, a higher, much higher to like 0.07% or 0.075 is one. And basically there's lots and lots of evidence that shows that it actually helps to break down the plaque, helps with strep mutans, lactobacillus, really does a good job from a caries and an inflammatory, both, both, you know, both issues that we have to deal with. So depending on a patient's So it's, it's cytyl prindium chloride. Yeah. It's a cationic quaternary ammonium compound used in some types of mouthwashes, toothpaste, lozenges, throat sprays, breast sprays, and nasal sprays. It is an antiseptic that kills bacteria and microorganisms. And what brands are this, is this found in? So the two mouthwashes that we have evidence to show the, the effectiveness are the Colgate and the Crest. And what's the brand name of that mouthwash? Colgate and Crest what? Um, one's Pro Shield and one's Pro Health. I hope you're not going to ask me all these names. No, no. Um, well, it's okay. That's why God made Google. That's what my mom, my mom goes to mass every single day. And if you ever ask her a question, she always says, well, that's why God made Google. Um, <laughs> so um, it, you said that's different. So it's in Colgate and Crest. And you like that one. You like that I one like better both, than. Both of them are good. Both of them are great. Okay. And you like you like that better than uh, say Listerine. So Listerine is an essential oil. Some people do well with Listerine. Some people don't. Now the problem with Listerine is it's got twenty one to twenty six percent alcohol in the ones that have alcohol. Some people react unfavorably to that. They might get some sloughing in their mouth. They might it, it, it might just not be tolerable for them. So what Listerine did is they made an alcohol free product. The problem with the alcohol free is they don't know if the substantivity is as effective once you take the alcohol out, the solubility of it changes. So they have their only claim with an alcohol free product is that it helps with bad breath. So it doesn't say, can't say 99% effective with um, gingivitis, caries, all the things that they can say as a mouthwash with alcohol. So, so the, the therapeutic one has alcohol and a lot of people, especially if you have xerostomia, a lot of people can't tolerate it. So this, another option is these settle prindium chloride options. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, they do not sell alcohol in Arizona between 2 AM and 6 AM. So it's just four hours. So my pharmacist friends tell me that at the 24 hour Walgreens, 
when there's no longer alcohol being sold in the state of Arizona, from two to four, people come in there, they go to the Listerine, they down the whole bottle and then put it back. So between 2 a.m. and four a- and 6 a.m., they have to keep an eye on the Listerine section because, as you say, it's 27% alcohol. But and it's, it- it's not the same. It's not right? alcohol, right. But, and it won't get you drunk. They're just going to get sick. That's interesting. So how is the alcohol different? Explain that. I can't go through. I, I, I wouldn't be able to give you all of the technical information, but it's a medical grade alcohol. It has a different formulation. It, it's, it's, it, it's metabolized different in your body. It's not going to get you drunk from what I've been told by everybody I've asked. Well, so, that's neat. This podcast has now turned into an Irish public service announcement. <laughs> Do not drink Listerine between the hours of 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. It'll get you it'll get you sick. It's not going to get you drunk. So what do you what do you think about some people who say that mouthwashes are actually far more effective if you just use the mouthwash liquid in the water flosser and use instead of using water in your flosser, you're using actual the mouthwash. So I, I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of the um, water pick flossers. I love it. They have a brand new one called the um, the um, Sonic Fusion. It's a new water pick and Sonic toothbrush all in one. And I I love putting medicaments in there. I think they can really help. Um, the problem is Listerine. You have to be careful afterwards. You have to make sure you rinse it and flush it through. Otherwise, the essential oils will clog it. So you got to be careful with that. But in instead of brushing, no, it's in addition to brushing because you still need to physically remove it. You can't, I mean, you know, the water pick's going to get into a lot of, you know, subgingival, it's going to lavage, it's going to help us, but it's not going to remove everything. We need to do both. There was an uh, article out, uh, there was a YouTube video out the other day, and I posted on uh, Dentaltown. Um, it was a uh, Sonic Toothbrush Olympics, Sonicare versus Burst versus Quip. And I said it out on my Twitter, and I thought it was funny how um, the people um, who didn't get uh, good reviews on this toothbrush were emailing me that I should take this down because the guy that made the video is a, um, what do you call it, a product champion or, um, and, and that gets a commission. What is that called? A Instagram what, what is it called when you're a product champion and you get a, a feedback on the loop? And then my reply to that person was, uh, well, are you a volunteer for Quip? I mean, so you, you know, you get paid a salary, so your information's good. This guy's an Instagram, YouTube channel guy, so he's bad. I mean, why why is money from a salary good and money from an influencer bad? But I thought the, <coughs> the point I'm trying to make is that <coughs> don't, attack people's motives, attack what they're saying. But anyway, he had a, a YouTube video uh, comparing what he thought the difference in Sonicare burst and Quip was. Um, do you have any uh, preferences in electric toothbrushes? Do you think they're all the same? Do you think uh, some are better than others? I'll be honest. I think everybody needs to try them for themselves. And I think that's why the companies give us a special discount to buy them at a professional price. What I like, you might hate. Some people, I mean, I remember when the first Sonic toothbrush came out, I felt like my whole brain was being shaken by it. And now it's a great product. I like the Oral-B Brawn as well. And they don't, well, they don't call it the Brawn anymore, but the Oral-B, you know, toothbrushes, the, the genius. Um, but everybody's different. Everybody's needs are different. You know, I've had friends who said, oh, I bought either Electric was the Quip or the Burst, and they said it looked great, but it didn't remove the plaque. You know, other thought leaders in the industry that I talked to, and but it's, it's really personal opinion, you know, and, and I honestly think what might work well for me might not work for you and vice versa. So that's why I try them all. But I Yeah, mean, and then you even have hygienists that, um, and a lot of researchers that, don't even believe in toothpaste. They believe in dry brushing. And they say, if, you know, if you brush for three minutes with soft bristles, that's what removes the plaque. Uh, they don't even care about the toothpaste. Um, you know, there, there is a lot of dry brushers. I know. Um, what do you think of dry brushing? Well, I want you to wet the toothbrush first because if it's dry and there's stuff caked on it and it's hard, the bristles, when you first put it in, could actually irritate the tissue. So I want you to soften the bristles. And the only way you can do that is by wetting it. So I think we need to do that to start with. If you want to then blot it dry, that's fine. Um, the reason I have some people dry brushing is that we now know that chlorhexidine um, 
can't be used within 30 minutes of using a fluoride toothpaste because one's positively charged, one's negatively charged. When you put a positive and negative, they, you know, they don't, they counteract each other. So if you wanted somebody to get the benefits of chlorhexidine, you couldn't do it right after brushing. So there's some people that will say just dry brush and then you can use the, you know, the mouthwash. My new take, what I've been telling everybody is the one thing I want us to think about is that and I actually, I, I'm really not a big fan of dry brushing because I think we need the fluoride now that I think of it. But if you're getting it in another vehicle, that's okay. But the, what I'm telling everybody is if you're putting fluoride on your toothbrush, do not rinse out. You need to just spit it out and go to bed because we know that we're diluting it once we rinse with water. So I don't want you to rinse afterwards if you're going to use a... A, another mouthwash, a stronger something else, then you can actually not, you know, use a dry brush. But it's silly to just use dry, dry brushing. Yeah, and what I tell them in Arizona is, you know, that that water bottle you take to bed with to spit your chew in while you're in bed, you could just spit the uh, the extra toothpaste in the same bottle you're spitting your chew in. Um, so, um, uh, what I thought was a very bad rap about chlorhexidine gluconate is, you know, patients would, always, when this came out, I mean, hell, it came out, what, 30 years ago? I, I remember back in the 80s. Um, they come out and they say, it's staining my teeth. And I would set them up in the chair and I'd get them to hold a mirror and I'd give them a toothpick that they get off their, their own table. And I, I'd show them, look, I'm just wiping this off. Right. You're, you're saying it's staining your teeth and I can just wipe it off. It's staining the plaque and that's yeah. that's why you're on it. You're on it. Because you can't remove your plaque. And now you're telling me, I said, you know, the only way I can really stain your tooth is to heat it up in an oven at like 350 degrees for at least 10 minutes. I, and so I thought the staining on Paradex was a positive thing because it was like giving the kids a little red chewable tablets to disclose their plaque. Yeah. And so do you like, do you like chlorhexidine, chlorhexidine gluconate or not really? I do for a lot of different patients. For a lot. I actually did my own little experiment one year, a um, probably eight years ago, my son was having his third molars extracted and the oral surgeon, I what went in for the consult and I said, what do you think of chlorhexidine afterwards? And he said, oh, it's a bunch of BS. You don't need it. He's a big boy. He can brush his teeth. And I said, yeah, but you know, after you've had four extractions, your ma extractions, your mouth hurts. You're not as apt to brush. He said, that's BS. You don't need it. So I went home, I ordered a bottle of it, came you know, to the day of the extractions, I went home with my son. I said to Stephen, I said, I don't want you to brush your teeth for the next week. I said, I'm going to give you this bottle and twice a day, I want you to rinse with this chlorhexidine. And we went back a week later and both he and his assistant looked in the mouth and said, oh my gosh, what, you know, what did you do? This is amazing. And then he looks at me and he said, oh, you're the hygienist. You probably brushed his teeth every day. And my son looked at him and said, no, we haven't brushed my teeth in a week. I mean, it was just amazing how much it helped. But, you know, after about a week, you start to see staining. So we stopped it at that point. And he was comfortable at that point that he could brush. So I always say after extractions, after grafts, there's so many different applications for a week. I think it's just the best thing we've got going out there. And we now have a regular and we have an alcohol-free product. So I like both of them. So um, speaking of not brushing for a week, um, a new specialty that's kind of coming along in dentistry is geriatric dentistry. And a lot of the research that they post shows that the average American um, gets one root surface cavity per month that they're put in a nursing home. So once grandma's been in there a year, she's got 12. I've actually gone to nursing homes in Arizona and followed the nurses around. And, um, you know, it's like some poor girls in charge of, you know, this whole, um, um, aisle, I mean, this hallway, and there's maybe six or eight rooms on each side, and she's got to brush her teeth and give their medicines and bathe them and feed them. And I mean, so so the toothbrushing is literally two swipes across the front incisor, spit in a Dixie cup. It's, it's just not happening. And, and the root surface decay is one cavity per month on the average. Um, what do you, do you think any of these, I mean, because what I'm looking at is okay, they're not going to go in there and brush properly for two or three minutes. It's just not going to happen. So do you think grandma, and by the way, only 5% of Americans end up in a nursing home. And uh, I'm lucky I'm a man because it's almost all women. And you go to a nursing home, you'll find one man named Lucky and everyone else is a woman. Um, do you think- um, My husband says that's because we kill you all too early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I'll pay you all leave this world earlier than us. <laughs> so, so if some homies listen to this and their grandma's in a nursing home, what would you recommend to someone? And a lot of them in the nursing home, they have brain issues. They got dementia. They got Alzheimer's. They got rheumatism. They can't hold a tooth. It's just, man, it's a perfect storm of of oral disease. What would you recommend any well, of this stuff for them? So interestingly enough, just as a aside, there's somebody named Angie Stone. I don't know if you've ever talked to Angie, but she has a book called Dying of Dirty Tea. And she actually has a business where she's getting hygienists all over the country to start their own business. It's kind of like a franchise to actually go into the nursing homes and just going in to brush tea. Just, you know, not making a diagnosis. So as a hygienist, we can do that. And the families are hiring them to do this. It's um, called High Life or something.com. Look up Angie Stone. You'll, you'll see her if you're looking on your iPad. But so she's got this amazing business idea to get us to, out there and doing something to help all these people. But that being an aside, you know, when you ask me about products, I interviewed a couple people um, who had once told me some of these new toothbrushes, I don't know if you've ever seen them, one's called the Triple Brush. And one's called the 30 second smile. They have bristles on three sides and then top and bottom. So in 30 seconds, they can get around the entire mouth. So there's some products out there that people have said to me that will help because it, it's easier for the caregiver to get in and brush their teeth. Um, this new silver diamine fluoride, if we can get that in there, because that's something you can do in the office in the nursing home. If we can stop the decay when it's still incipient lesions and before it breaks off the entire um, crown, we're gonna be saving grandma a whole bunch of aggravation and, and pain and things like that. So there's, there's lots of different options. There's mouthwashes we might be able to get. Um, in some states, there's now some CE courses that hygienists can do as an independent study where they can go in on a regular basis and train the, the aides you know, go in and help them, answer questions, get them the information they need to help the aging population. The problem is they, there's a lot of turnover in that support staff. So we get, got to get the families involved. We have to get them to take ownership and make this idea Angie has of hiring somebody to come in every day or a couple times a week can help them to, to eliminate some of that staggering decay that you're talking about. Yeah, we had Angie Stone on the show. She was episode... Uh, what episode was she? Uh, um, what number is she? Oh my gosh, she was number ninety nine. Okay. Angie Stone, we're on eleven hundred and like twenty or something. She was uh number ninety nine. Um, yeah, I sounds like that was uh that long was like time. yeah, that was a long time ago. But um, yeah, when I was in the nursing home, one of the things that I thought was just insane is for some reason, you know, occupations are very um sex related. Like uh, minors are like ninety nine percent men why do women not want to be a minor uh, I, you know when you're when you're a businessman it's no what it should have could it just is what it is for some reason women don't want to be minors and in the nursing homes all those lpns and rns and um they're all uh, girls and they're all little and uh, what i thought was weird is um uh, there was one of the girls i'll never forget she says yeah we have to have the fire department come here every couple of days because some some big old person will fall in the shower and we we can't get her back to her feet and get her in the bed and i thought well why don't you make sure on every shift there's a a nurse who's six foot tall and weighs 225 pounds i mean i would think the fire department would just say look you got to start hiring nurses that can lift some big fat man back to his bed but it, it was just crazy but but what i was my, my review of the nursing home is that they have so much every they have so much to do they're just never going to do two three minutes of proper brushing. i really like that silver diamine fluoride and um um for nursing home decay i think that's going to be a big deal it's the most controversial topic in pediatric dentists i mean on dental town um under the pediatric dentist boards we have so many uh, board certified pediatric dentist and I mean there's just two gruesome they either love it or hate it why why do you love it and you did a great article on it. I just I just forwarded it today uh, on uh, Twitter you, you, it was a very popular um, course let me um pull it up um, here we go what is it oh yeah here it is a uh, silver CE, Silver Diamine Fluoride, Another Arrow in the Quiver to Defeat Decay by Judy Bennett and Patty Degani. And I don't want to 
hurt your feelings or make you cry or anything, but my God, that was controversial. There are pediatric dentists who just swear, make this go away. And when Gordon Christian said uh, that, uh, but anyway, what, what, are, what are your thoughts on it? Who cares what yeah, Gordon said? I'm on the same side as Jeanette McLean and, and we're all really very positive. We love it. We don't understand the negative to it. If I don't have, if, if a dentist doesn't have to put a child under general anesthesia to take care of their mouth, if we can make a, that first experience a positive experience, we've done, that, that's half the battle. If we can stop the decay until they get a little bit more mature, until they get more comfortable in the office, I mean, it doesn't have to stay that way. And when people say, you know, oh, it turns all the teeth black, it doesn't. It only turns black where there's decay. And we can restore that. We can put a glass ionomer over that. We had to do something now instead of the old um, art, which was atraumatic restorative treatment, we now have smart silver material a traumatic restorative treatment. So we can put a conventional glass ionomer on it and we can do something effective. What are you taking pictures of? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm posting a comment on your uh, on that uh, article. So that uh, article is on Dental Town and I'm posting a comment and I'm going to say, I am podcasting her as we speak. Do you have any questions? Uh, but but so why do you, why do you think it is so kind? Of, because Jeanette McLean, she's been on the show a couple of times. Uh, I'm a big fan of hers. I think she's yeah. just a rock star. Hell, she's the only person in dentistry I know who was covered in the New York Times. I mean, how a rock star can you get? I don't care who your dental idol is on earth. I mean, GV Black and Pierre Fouchard weren't ever in the New York Times. Why do you think it's so controversial? Because, A, people are uncomfortable with something they didn't learn about. You know, think about when you were in dental school in the late 70s or late 70s, early 80s. You know, they, they didn't talk about it. It was something, it's, it, it's something different. It's, um, you know, they're afraid. You know, and, and that's the crazy thing. If you look at, there was a study done at NYU that was looking at people's attitudes, parents' attitudes, and they're not upset with it. We're worried. We have this expectation or anticipation. But there's so many people who can't afford all kinds of crazy dentistry. There's so many people who don't have access to care. So there's so many pockets of people, of, of young kids, of geriatric patients. I mean, when I go to South America now, I do it on every one of these kids. Why not stop that decay process? I, don't, I might not have the ability to do anything more, but at least I can stop it. So to me, there's no negative to it whatsoever. You know, yeah, I might get a spot on their lip or their tongue or their gingiva, but it's going to go away in a couple days. I'm going to turn the decay black. I'm going to, it's going to harden that tooth. It's not going to be able to continue to decay. So to me, there, it's a win-win. I can paint it on a second time if I need to. I can then restore it. We see some gingival conditions getting better. We see the bacteria disappearing. I mean, there's nothing negative about it. It takes a couple seconds. But people can't charge the same thing they charge for restoration. There you go. Ding, 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 ding. I was wondering where you're getting around to it. You're well, I, you're talking Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, and then you finally got to money's the answer, what's the question? Yeah. And, and then the other thing that's so funny is people haven't I mean, why why do you I mean the difference between the Soviet Union and the United States was just simply the economic system. One was for a profit and one was all for one, one for all. And the no nobody debates the economic merits of free enterprise versus socialism. And yet when um, people are incentivized to believe something, they'll believe it. And when something is against their economic incentive, they won't believe it. And one of the funniest things I think about is when they talk about how chrome silk crowns are better. Dude, you know what the failure rate of a pulpotomy in a chrome silk crown is? I mean, they, 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 they start talking about silver diamond fly and might not be perfect. Dude, your, your uh, pulpotomy and chrome silk crown and then the other thing I don't like about the media point of it is um, whenever some kid has a big problem in a pediatric dentist from the sedation or whatever, and the kid, um, um, cause Jeanette McLean, the one thing she doesn't like is she doesn't like taking these small kids in and putting them down. Right. Cause if you put, if you put 10,000 kids down, you know, somebody um, could be in serious danger, but the media never addresses the media never addresses, um, Judy, why did your two-year-old need eight root canals? Mm -hmm. they, they, the, it's always the dentist 
And the anesthesiologist is the bad guy. And they never ever, and the same thing with the Paul Potting and Chrome Cell Crown. Um, you know, if some kid comes in and needs two or three Paul Potting and Chrome Cell Crowns, I can guarantee you the mom's kissing this kid with five open cavities. The dad's kissing this kid with bombed out decay. It, it's a it's a herd disease. What I see in my practice for 31 years is the whole family is clean and the kids are clean or the whole family has multiple cavities, gum disease, perio. Hell, this two-year-old kid is babysitted by her stay-at-home grandma, and she's got upper denture, full mouth gum disease, haven't had a cleaning for four or five years. It's just uh it's just a perfect storm. Um and and that, that and that's the one thing I think the next um level of hygiene has to go is you know it, quit looking in this three-year-old kid's mouth and saying, oh, Junior has four cavities and start looking at, where did you find Junior? What was he out in the middle of a, of a cornfield? No, he's living in a house. And if this little kid has four cavities, I don't have to look at anyone's mouth to know that everybody in that house has cavities or sharing utensils and cups. And to try to get that mom to say, look, I need to see the whole herd. I, I can't treat little Johnny if I can't treat everyone, sharing a spoon, drinking out of a cup, kissing them. I mean, hell, you go to Walmart, he's, a kid will be sitting in a cart and a mom will kiss it 15 times, you know, right, right there in front of you. So it's a herd disease. Well, so people don't realize that it's that carries is contagious. So when I tell my, you know, I've got a 24, 28 year old, I was out for lunch or dinner a couple of weeks ago with one of them and had told him and all his friends that it's contagious. And now all of a sudden they're like, Oh my God, I'm never kissing another woman. But <laughs> that wasn't my intention. My intention is, you know, people don't get that. And maybe that's what we need. The message we have to start telling people is that, you know, we're not born with streptococcus mutans. We get them because mom takes the pacifier that fell on the floor, sucks on it, licks it, and then puts it back in the kid's mouth. So there's so many little things that we do. And like you said, grandma, caretaker, whoever, fill in the blank, has decay. And we wonder where these kids get it. You know, I was out for dinner a couple weeks ago. And I watched this man. He flossed his teeth. And then he gave the floss to his wife. And she proceeded at the table to floss her teeth with the same floss. And I went ballistic. I mean, it's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people don't get it. I had this conversation a week ago, a week ago. They share the same toothbrush. And they said, well, if we kiss and we sleep together, what difference does it make? I said, because when you kiss, you're not taking bristles and, and ramming and jamming these bacteria, fungi, and viruses deep into your gums, causing blood. I mean, there's, I mean, but yeah, it's a, uh, so you have, you have two kids, 24, 28? I do. Uh, both boys? Yes. Yeah, I got four boys, 23, 25, 27, 28. So I'm probably twice as damaged as you. You've only had two boys damaging you for 24, 28. I've had four. Are you uh are you are you in therapy right now recovering from raising two boys? <laughs> I'm okay. You're My okay. That when we moved to Florida, we weren't gonna tell them our forwarding address, but they found us. <laughs> but you know, it's funny when you told them they were contagious, the that your boys thought they were gonna kiss someone and they, you know that the kissing someone they were gonna think about that differently. I do think the planet is on a shift. I mean, um, for the last two thousand years, the planet is focused on diseases transmitted below the belt, STDs, and they've always been talking about syphilis, gonorrhea, and all that kind of stuff like that. And I think they're just awakening to the fact that maybe you can transmit disease at the other end of the mouth. I mean, it still hasn't even taken off in dentistry. I mean, you can go into any dental office in Phoenix, go stop at any, pull up any chart, and here's grandma. She's been on a three month recall for 10 years and they've never seen grandpa. And it's like, well, what if you were treating her every three months for chlamydia for 10 years? Would you eventually say, hey, grandma, yeah. are you sleeping with some guy with chlamydia? I mean, how can you treat the woman and not the man. How can you how can you think this two it's normal for a two year old kid to have eight cavities and you just want to and you and you're scheduling them or you refer them to a pediatric dentist? I mean that, that is, I mean it's like yeah go send them to a pediatric dentist. Let them get apolpotomies, crumbs, crowns. They'll only last two years. Why? 
because the same people in the house are kissing him, licking him, sharing utensils, blowing on his food. You have to, and, and, and plus it's good business. I mean, you would double your recall if you got every three month perio patient to start bringing in everyone they're swapping spit with. And every time, every time a girl starts showing the baby bubble, that's when she's most motivated to get her whole herd in there. And the only dentist lecturing around the world that I've seen that truly get this or where they make the best cars in the world, Germany. The dentists in Austria and Germany and Liechtenstein are the only offices I've ever been in where they routinely culture saliva. When a woman shows up and she's pregnant, it's like a fire department, five to alarm. They want everybody in the family in. They want their saliva. They want them cultured. They're trying to stop the transfusion, uh, the transmission of all this disease into the next offspring uh, herd. Yep. yep. Amer America's got so far to go on this. In fact, I declare, I was talking to um, the then CEO, Bob Ganley. I say, well, why don't you sell this I declare um, culturing deal in America? I said, no one's ever asked for it. Well, the Ivoclar had the, um, they had a saliva check that you could do for uh, lactobacillus and strep mutans that you had to, uh, you bought an incubator and you spit into the thing and cultured it, but they've just discontinued that from this market. So they did have it for a number of years because I've used it. Um, and, I, and, and when dentists don't think it's drill film, Bill, remember, open up your history book. Um, after World War II, all the countries in World War II were completely annihilated except for the United States. The war did not take place here. So everywhere they had made a car, a tank, a Jeep, anything, they, they were leveled. In fact, Germany didn't declare the reconstruction over. The end of World War II was 45. The reconstruction wasn't over until 80. It took 35 years to rebuild that rubble. That's why America's economic expansion blew up so much after that. And after, um, where was I going with that? Where, 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 uh, where was I going with that train of thought? That decay. That oh, oh, oh. well, America, America was so lucrative that it was the Longshoremen's Club. No ship container got in or out of this country without going through the Longshoremen's Union. And, it, and they had so much money that it was their union up in Washington, Oregon, and California that started the first dental insurance company in 1958. And that eventually turned into Delta Dental. Now there's like 39 different Delta Dentals. But they covered x-rays at 100%. Well, before 1958, almost no dentist had an x-ray machine. And as soon as Delta started covering it, it was like a domino effect. Every dental office, across, it was one of the fastest rapidly integrating and, and the x-ray machine had been out for decades right. no interest but when insurance covered it a hundred percent all the dentists got an x-ray machine so incentives matter so if you come out with silver diamine fluoride and the insurance company will give you a small amount but if you do a pulp body and chrome cell crown they'll give you several times bigger amount what are all the dentists going to believe of course and when you say, oh, Howard, you're just being a cynical bastard. You're just being a bad boy. No, this is how humans have been reacting since they discovered economics. I mean, go back to Adam Smith, uh, the Scott. Um, so, uh, you know, incentives matter. Insurance companies, when, when there was no insurance pay for x-ray dentists didn't need x-ray now if they pay for x-ray every dentist has an x-ray machine needs x-rays so on this silver diamond fluoride incentives are going to matter aren't they i think so and I, I mean and once they start reimbursing them better I, and i think that that just changed this year with the code it's now instead of per application it's per tooth so i think that there's definitely going we're going to see more acceptance from the financial end of it. So I think that's going to be a little and, bit better. And when 5% of Americans are in a nursing home, one out of every 20, 5% of you listening to this will end up in a nursing home. You won't be a man. Men men stay at home. They die. The wife takes care of them. Then they, the wife dies five years later. Uh, they don't know why the man dies five years earlier. We assume it's because we want to. Uh, but um, the, the bottom line is, uh, you know, it'd be really good money and it'd be really good public service that maybe a dentist um you know once a week after work just gets a silver diamine fluoride and knocks out all the uh, nursing homes in their five mile radius and I going challenge, in there i challenge and, going and yeah. hygiene to, to, to develop a relationship with the local nursing home and offer that kind of a service i think it would be great go in a half a day a week 
There's got to be a way we can make this happen. Are hygienists allowed in Arizona to go in there and apply the silver diamond fluoride or are they in Florida? I'm in Florida. We're allowed. Yeah, we're allowed to do it with a dentist um, prescription. So if a dentist were to say, you know, patient A, B and C needs it, we can go in and do it. I think it depends on the the state and the supervision and things like that. Some are direct and some are indirect. So every state's different. There's some that are definitely doing it. Alaska's doing it. Maine, Maine, they've been doing it for a couple of years. It's been great. Um, And 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 it's sad. It prevents everything because when it's a little old lady and now she's lost her ability to talk or communicate and she's in pain and then everybody in the nursing home says she won't eat. Well, I mean, she's got dementia. She knows she can't. I mean, it's just so sad. Yep. And, um, you know, it just um, it, it's the 4,000 pound elephant in the room. No one wants to talk about. They all want to talk about all these other issues. It's like, dude, the, these are the greatest generation and they're in these nursing homes and they're getting a root service cavity every month they're in there they get another one and um so let's let's continue on your line um um uh, next is uh xylitol licorice uh let's go with xylitol then we'll do licorice well xylitol basically is just um you know we know that there's a lot of great products out there we know that spry has got a lot of great stuff there's there's just some cool stuff out there that we know can help as an antimicrobial so you know it I, it's just worth everybody looking into some of the sprays, gums, candies, whatever. We know that we can alter the pH. You know, if somebody is snacking all day long and they're taking the pH down to two and three with some of their sodas and some of the the things they snack on, I mean, just look even in your office. Look at what your employees are drinking and eating all day long. If they take a big cup of coffee and they take a sip every half hour or an hour, you know, they're keeping the pH down to two or three. If we can pop in a piece of xylitol candy or gum, we can bring that pH back to seven and neutralize it again. So there's lots of different options. There are some mouthwash options, toothpaste, gums, candies. There's a plethora of things and there's lots of companies that do it. You know, Spry is in my mind, the number one company. There's Epic, there's um, Zelly. There's just a whole bunch of them. There's my, my, one of my other favorites is these two old grandmas from um, the Northwest um, like P- Portland or Seattle that called ice chips. I don't know if you ever saw them on um, the shark tank. They've got amazing products out there. <clears throat> nice hundred percent xylitol candies. So, so there's lots of different options and the geriatrics. I mean, a lot of people can benefit from them. So I just like to talk about them. Um, just one more Irish public service announcement is Jameson whiskey. Is that antimicrobial? I mean, can we, if we just swish with that for a minute before we swallow, is that count as oh, oral health? All the time. I don't have any clinical trials to prove it. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm sure we could get a lot of Irish dentists to volunteer for these clinical trials. If you if you set up the study, um, I'll get all my homies to um, show up yeah. for the study. So so what about licorice? So licorice is sold in the form of a product called Lolo's. And I don't know if you've seen it. They call it Cavi Block is the company's name for it. But it's just Cavity it's Block. A Cavi Block is the thing. But look up Lolo's. L O L O A Z or O Z O Z. L one word or two words. One word. L O L O L O A Z or O Z maybe. L O L O O Z. Lolo's. See if you can find that. Anyway, it has a licorice derivative product. So coming up for you. Um, I found Lolo's on um, Twitter. Lolo's. Here we go. L- I'm sorry. L O L O Z. Anti cavity lolly. L O L O Z. L O L O Z. Yes. Okay. So it's an anti caries product. So it's somebody, a child or an adult who has very high risk. One option we now have is that we can ask them to suck on a lollipop or a candy one week, then three weeks off, then one week on, three weeks off. And there are lots of studies, and they're doing them in geriatric homes as well with patients and seeing a drastic reduction in, you know, lacto, well, lactobacillus and um, streptococcus mutans from the use of these candies. So it's something new. Wow. And uh, yeah, I'm on their site now. I This is all news to me. This is so cool. I love my own show. I'm the only one who's listened to every episode of Dentistry <laughs> Uncensored. 
<clears throat> and I really have. I've learned so much. I mean, that's just amazing. It's so cool to get smart people like you to come on. I've, I've never heard of Lolo's. Order your box. And what did you say the active ingredient was? They call it Cavi Block. C-A-V-I-B-L-O-C. It's just their proprietary. Here's what it says. Your teeth are home to 10,000 million bacteria per square inch. Lolo's fights and all problems with the source. A team of microbiologists at the UCLA School of Dentistry try to find a natural, easy way to promote dental health and avoid teeth decay. For over seven years, the team researched hundreds of Chinese medicines until they found the solution in a special form of licorice root extract. The scientists discovered that this natural extract helped to dramatically inhibit the growth of three types of bacteria, Streptococcus mutans and Sabrinus and Lactobacillus. These are the very types of bacteria that contribute to dental health problems. I got to tell you something. I had Rolla Christian on the show. She's a RDH like yourself and a PhD in microbiology. She says that when she's studying uh, cavities at four millimeters deep into the cavity, there is no more Streptococcus mutans of any sort. Um, as they, as the cavity gets deeper and deeper and deeper, uh, the whole, and she also says that they are discovering a new species of bacteria in the human mouth every quarter. So about once every year, they discover four more bacteria. So she said all those concepts that I learned as a little kid 30 years ago, that this bacteria goes in and eats this whole, she goes, that's all just child's play. She goes, they, it's going to be a long time, but that's interesting. Lolo's. Well, the issue is if we can change the bacterial load in the mouth, we can potentially change what's happening for some of these high-risk patients. So it's really... You know, there's just a bunch of new products on the market, which I try to talk about. So another one, the next one on my list, I don't know if you saw, using tea. So there's another set of products that's- Using, you, okay, you say in tea or chi? Tea extract, T-E-A. So look up Mighty Flow, M-I-G-H-T-E-A-F-L-O-T. Uh, say it again, M-I-G-H-T? E-A. E-A. F, F is in Frank, L-O-W, Mighty Flow. And see if you get a gum and a candy and a spray. And, I did. And they're they're out of the Medical College of Georgia, I think, is there where they're coming from. So we have lots and lots of new options out there. So do you know the uh, the people behind any of these last two companies? I've met them all. I've talked to them all. I've looked at all their research. Um, I have a couple other and, and you and you believe it you think they're they're good people solid ideas are you and they're not a you I think, think they're solid these things that I'm telling you about are solid ideas very much so well then you should uh, turn me on to them tell them to come on the show talk to uh, I mean great marketing I mean it's uh the price is right tell them to come on the show I'm trying to find mighty T flows website I uh oh I um, see it on Amazon I see it in uh Hold on one second. Um, so if you go to my website, which is judybendit.com. I did. Um, okay. okay. All uh, I'm asking you to do is if you go to the second. Okay. Judy, Judy, B-E-N-D-I-T. Right, dot com. And the third tab says product links. And if you click on that link, it will tell you about every product I talk about. Some of them are very instrument related, ergonomics. There's a lot of emerging technologies I talk about. That's where you'll see all the, you know, silver diamine and, and lots of other products um, for, you know, sensitivity and things like that. Um, and then if you go scroll all the way down, let me, oh wait, that might even be up in the top. I was just gonna look for the mighty flow. Just, oh, I might have it under gums and candies. But if you go there, Toothpaste options, infection control, hand pieces, profi angles. I mean, everything's here. Um, so if I look. Wow, that is one unbelievably complete list. I have been working for years to perfect this list and get it. Now, everything. are you on Twitter? I'm, <laughs> I, I beg my kids to help me to get better at it. I need help with it, but I'm. I, I need to do more, but at the bottom. Are you on? Are you on Instagram? I have an account for both. I just don't know how to use them well enough, so I need help. Well, with that. here, here's 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 the deal. They're totally different communities. Um, LinkedIn 
is everyone in dentistry who uh, works for a dental supply company, I mean, it's all your 3M, all the dental company, all those people are on LinkedIn. Twitter is all the old baby boomers like me. Instagram, Instagram is all the millennial dentists. All the dentists who are 35 and under are on Instagram. Right. And, um, and so... Um, yeah, this is uh, do me a favor, go to Camelux C A M. Wait, on the internet, on the internet, go on the internet and put in C A M E L L I X dot com, and that will take you to the whole Mighty Flow um website with all of their products. So okay. I had, I had seen that. I had seen that. I just didn't think that was, I thought that was a, um, an e-commerce site or something. No, yeah, that's their, that, that, they have all their research on here. They have, you can get to their research. There's a whole tab there with all of their, their studies. Um, they're a real company. Huh. That is, uh, Wow, and they follow me on Twitter, and I don't follow them on Twitter. How rude of me to not even know they exist. Find Camelox alongside a longtime supporter of the Lydia Project at the Colors of Cancer event hosted by the Augusta University. Okay, Mighty T, here it is. Mighty T Flow, dry mouth relief line, clinically proven natural. Okay, I'm going to retweet that. And thank you, by the way. I got 25,000 people following me on Twitter, and I want you to know it's a uh, – uh, thank you so much. What they do is they follow, you know, they're listening to this while they commute to work. So they can't drive and, you know, they're driving, so they can't do anything. That's why we put a transcript to every one of these podcasts on um, Dental Town and Hygiene Town because a, um, a lot of dentists and hygienists say they can read our podcast in 30 minutes. And a lot of people listen to the podcast um, at one and a half to two X speed. In fact, I was having dinner the other day with some dentist. And it was um, seven dental students from AT Still and Mesa. And this girl just starts cracking. Everybody's like teasing her. And, and I'm like, what, what, what? They go, do your Howard impersonation because she listens to me at 2X. And she, it was just killer. She was doing me at 2X. And it sounded so hilarious. But <laughs> That's great. So these uh, millennials are, they're so fun. Um, yeah. Okay. So you already talked about chlorine, chl chlorine dioxide. Uh, chlorine dioxide is basically, um, oh my gosh, I'm losing my mind. Closest. Well, used, closest. Cl is the product. Closest. And, well, that used to be back in the day, that was Omar Reed and Perry Radcliffe, and they called it retardant. Do you so, remember that? Yeah, I do. But then and it was you, also the Kai's technique is kind of on the same idea years right? ago. I mean, you know, it was all, it was all baking soda and all those types of things, but but, but those guys, all, those guys all ran in the same circle. The guys, the the founder of the guys like me with the microscope, Perry yeah. Radcliffe. I mean, if he was still alive, he'd probably be like ninety years old. And yeah. uh, Omar Reed, he just came on the show. But yeah, I, and I think it's coming back because there are some young dentists um, reintroducing the microscope, where they're getting the patient to spit on the deal, and then they showing them all these crazy bacteria and spirochetes and jumping around and and the chlorine dioxide the rumor has it uh, this is what perry radcliffe told me at dinner after we had both had way too many drinks he said that he was sitting by a swimming pool out here in phoenix i think he was in scottsdale or paradise valley and he was looking at that swimming pool and he's like why can you see clear water all the way to the bottom of the deep end the only two ingredients i put in there is chlorine and acid and when you lower the pH by one, the chlorine killing efficiency doubles. So their closest was just chlorine and acid. They said it just kills everything. Now, do you like do you like um, closest or chlorine dioxide, which is basically chlorine? So there's and, um, types. There's activated and there's um, an inactive. You know, some different formulations. Different companies have. I like the closest product a lot. Um, I have a need for that with some patients. There are some people who are allergic or sensitive to mint, peppermint, or just don't like it. When you get the closest bottle, the, the, the flavoring agent is separate. You can choose to put it in or not. Um, it's a nice, clean 
set of ingredients that, you know, it's not too abrasive. So for people who react to a lot of the other ones, some people get sloughing from some other stuff. It's just a nice thing. I, my dad actually was, is an oral cancer survivor and this helped him through a couple months when he was really struggling with some of the other products on the market. So, so there's definitely a need for it. They've just introduced their silver version, which has fluoride. So there's, there's definitely a segment of population who love it and need it. And so there are a lot of offices that recommend it. Now, is it too personal to ask, how do you think your dad got oral cancer? Um, my own personal opinion, he was, he's not, he was, he had no risk factors. He wasn't a smoker. He wasn't a drinker, but they found stage four squamous cell at the base of his tongue at age 62. And I swear it was from all the things he inhaled in a dental office in a hospital for years, you know, back in the day when we used all the um, the acrylics that we used. And, you know, there were just so many things that we did. He also worked with ether a lot when he was in the hospital with patients and, uh, you know, back in the early sixties. And I just think there was something to it. You know, think about all the gasoline people used to inhale and something had to happen, but they thought it was a sinus infection and it was stage four. And he, sur and he survived it? He's still surviving. He's had, he's just finished his fourth cancer. They're all primaries. Nothing's connected. He's had lung cancer, prostate cancer. None of them are connected, but you know, he's a survivor. And he, how old is he? He is now 80. He just turned 83 this week. Oh, well that's, that's still, it is amazing. The average male in the United States only lives to be 74. Yeah. Well, so, so you said he's 80. What? He's, he just turned 83 and he's, he, he's funny. He, he, he con contracts these cancers, but he, he fights them and he survives and he's doing great. He's that is doing amazing. Yeah, yeah. But not with, I mean, he's my guinea pig. So every product I've ever talked about for dry does mouth. That, does that mean he's Italian? No. <laughs> 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 no, but, but I have a couple patients like my dad who are really the extreme and they try all these products for me. And like he tried the, the Mighty Tea, the gum, and he loved it. He swears by that. And they try, I mean, just a bunch of other products that talking, they, talking about old age, one mistake I made that I want to tell you young, because podcasters, I mean, they're, they're all, they're all young. In fact, shoot me an email, Howard at dentaltown.com. Tell me who you are. Put a comment in the YouTube. The YouTube is really taken off. Uh, he we're at 9,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel. It's at um, youtube.com, Dentaltown Magazine. Um, give me in the comments. Tell me how old you are or whatever. But when I got out of school, I, you know, I was in Phoenix here with a lot of retirees. And a lot of times these 85, 90-year-old men would come in and, and they would need like all this stuff. And I would just try to patch it up because you knew they weren't going to live very long. Yeah, 10 years later, they're still alive. And I'm telling you that when, when you're just a 30-year-old baby – and a 90 year old comes in, you just think, well, I'm just going to smooth it out. Or, you know, they obviously, obviously I don't need to do anything permanent. And it was a huge mistake because when they're just so old, you know, that you just got to get them through, you know, the holidays and they're still in your office five years later, 10 and years later. I mean, patients who are 100 and 304 so yeah. for regular visits. So you know. Yeah, and I, yeah, it, it, it's a huge, um, I, I read a, a lot of on um, um, on medical errors because, you know, like it, it's one of the top three causes of death is like cancer, um, heart disease, and then medical office, um, you know, I think medical office uh, mistakes are like 300,000, but they, but they say that the biggest errors are when your doctor is different, um, sex, age, culture, religion, like, like if you were a Navajo Indian, a Navajo Indian doctor knows all the nuances of their culture. Um, when I'm a 55 year old man, I wouldn't want to be going to a 30 year old woman, but uh, uh, you can guarantee that when you're a 56 year old man, if you went to a 56 year old physician, He's concerned about the same stuff as you are. He's probably really on top of prostate, but probably not very good on ovarian cancer and all these things like that. So um, doctors, and, and it's really tough. I, I, I When a 90-year-old doctor, I mean, when a 90-year-old patient goes to a 30-year-old millennial, um, they're, they're, they're just looking at a dead man. They're like, did you, are you lost on the way to the funeral? Do you need me to call you an Uber to the mortuary? Uh, may, how may I help you? And that 90-year-old, you know, he's playing bridge with people that are 103. So it's uh, so when you start getting too far away from the demographic of your patient, you got to be careful. But that was a big bias for me, um, not treating uh, old, old, old people 
uh, for really aggressively because if your dental treatment is not going to last five years, you got to ask yourself why you're even doing it. And just because that guy is 93 years old doesn't mean he's not going to live five years. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And need his tea. And, and so this tea extract. So tell me more about these tea extracts. They, everybody just needs to read their, go on, read their research. I mean, I've just seen very favorable response from my, my, some patients, from my dad. I mean, it's just, whatever it is, it's working. And it's a, it's a green tea extract. And it, they- So you got a name brand on it? it it's that Camelex is the brand. Oh, okay. And, and the, the products are called Mighty Flow. So the word might, and then the word tea, and then flow. Okay. So that's what you were looking up before. And, and right. they, they sell direct, I think. I think they sell on Amazon. I don't think they sell through the dealers yet. But it's, it's absolutely worth looking at. I want, I want to ask you another one um, that's um, the, the, the um, millennials. Are, they, they're wanting bamboo toothbrushes. They, they don't want plastics. Uh, I guess they're finding plastics in all the turtles and, and in the ocean and a right. big range straws in florida we're not they what but they've eliminated plastic straws in florida it's already gone into effect in florida seriously you can request a paper one but you can't get a plastic straw so how's that going over it doesn't taste as good <laughs> but I, you know it is what it is um people are accepting it just like in some states you can't get a plastic bag you have to bring your own shopping bags to the grocery store. I mean, every every state's different. Every store's different. Um, I don't have a problem with the bamboo handles, but to me, the brush is the most important part of it. And there's all kinds of new bristle configurations that, to me, are what we're buying. I mean, you know, there are some, I don't know if you've seen the Curaprox toothbrush. Instead of like 1,200 bristles, it has 5,400 bristles. Um, Colgate has something called a Slim Soft. I mean, there's some amazing, you know, Sunstar Butler has this wonderful bristle brush and they're just super thin. And we actually know that we can get down subgingivally now, like 1.5 millimeters. So to me, it's not about the handle. It's really about what the brush can do for me. So I want everybody to dispense the brush that they want their patients to use, not to let them go out and buy all these other silly products. So I can summarize, I can't believe, man, we went way over. We're we went way over. But I, basically, um, I can summarize everything Judy said in one minute. And just said, you switch with Jameson whiskey for 30 seconds every morning and swallow uh, once in the morning and once. At, should you do it at lunch, too, or just morning and night? Whatever you want. Whatever, Whatever. you want. But, hey, um, and thank you so much for accepting our invitation to speak at the townie meeting um, in Scottsdale, Arizona, March 21st. And Tepe, my God, um, thank you so much. Uh, her lecture is going to be the myths, legends, and realities of over-the-counter products from Judy. Uh, Judy, thank you so much for all that you do for dentistry. Thank you so much for writing uh, one of the most popular courses on um, Hygiene Town and Dental Town with silver diamine fluoride. Uh, thank you for coming out to Phoenix. I just love you to death. And I'm so sorry to hear that you had to raise two boys to the ages of 24 and 28. Now I know you might feel my pain. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks. Have a great one.